Star Wars 7x7 episode 3065. Rick's Road is the name of the season finale of Andor, and it is a fascinating episode as much for what happened as for what didn't happen. Punch it! Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7, your daily dose of Star Wars joy. And thank you so much for joining me for it. So this is our patented seven takeaway breakdown of this final episode of season one of Andor. And we're going to start with the thing that I spoke about at the top of the show, about it being fascinating for the things that didn't happen. So for all of the interest in Cassie and Andor and in Axis, aka Luthan Rail, none of the people who were after either of those characters actually came in contact with those characters in any significant way. The nearest thing to Imperial engagement of Cassie and Andor happened with Cassie and taking on a couple of Imperial officers and a death trooper in the hotel when he rescued Bix. But otherwise, the Empire got no look at him whatsoever. Dedra Miro was on the ground and got no look at him whatsoever. Cyril and Linus Mosk were there and also didn't get a shot at him. Vel and Cinta have been there watching for Cassian with orders to assassinate him. They never got a look at him. Luthen didn't even get a look at Cassian, and he was interested in potentially assassinating him too, until, of course, the very end of the episode, and we'll get to that momentarily. And even poor Nurchi, who informed on Cassian, ended up having a similar fate to Tim from the first arc of the season, informing on Cassian, and ended up getting killed for his trouble. And it seems that from the previous episode, they never showed us whether Bix identified Anto Krieger as Axis, but based on the events of this episode, she clearly did not identify him as Axis, because Krieger, of course, was killed in the raid, and they said, yeah, you want to have a conversation about things, find access to Dedra Miro, because she was unhappy that things unfolded with Krieger the way that they did. So, yes, from that we can intuit that Bix did not tag Krieger as Axis to throw the Imperials off the scent. Instead, she must have said, no, that ain't him. But no one got a shot at Luthen either, even though he was on the ground, despite Clea warning him not to be there. For a second takeaway, I will applaud the fact that we got some beautiful moments with characters, including the flashback with young Cassian and Clem Andor, and Cassian going to visit Clem's brick in the wall. We got wonderful speeches from Marva and from Brasso relaying Marva's words, and another bit of a flashback with Nemec and Cassian listening to the treatise, the manifesto that Nemec had recorded. Oh, gosh. All of the monologues that have been given, and I guess you could count Nemec's situation there as a monologue for all intents and purposes, have just been absolutely stellar. The writing on the Andor series has been absolutely spectacular, and they did not let us down in this finale, especially with Marva's incredible call to action for fighting the Empire, but also the deeply personal message that she shared with Brasso to deliver to Cassie and when they would finally get together. For a third takeaway, let's talk about the riot, and I'm left wondering how it actually ends. Will the people of Ferex actually overpower all the Empire's people there, or will the Empire smash this particular uprising? I personally feel like they're going to get the upper hand on things. I think the last thing that we have, like the last emblematic scene, is of the Time Grappler kicking that Stormtrooper out of the bell tower. And yes, we do see that the Imperials have a you know personnel carrier with a large gun on it that is definitely creating some superiority in the street fight, but I feel like they're going to get a handle on that, quite honestly. But even if they don't, it likely means that the Empire is going to establish a much firmer foothold on Ferex than they currently have right now. And that's not going to be a good thing for anybody who survives this situation. But you get the idea that our main characters, the people that we care about the most from Ferex, they have either been killed by the Empire or they are escaping. For a fourth takeaway, let's talk about the ending with Cassian and Luthen. Cassian saying, kill me or take me in. Well, 
Cassian has certainly established his value to Luthen, and the fact that you know Cassian is saying, like, "I've got nothing left to lose, so just you know be done with it or make use of me." He got on the Fondor, which is supposed to be quite a sophisticated craft. So I imagine that that also factors into Luthen's thinking. But the fact that he was on Ferrix, managed to survive all the chaos that happened without the ISB getting him, without Velencinta getting him, like that has to be something that factors into Luthen's calculations, especially considering that he just sacrificed Anto Krieger. And so he's going to have to build something new to replace Krieger or, you know, help fund something new that will replace Krieger, one would imagine. And of course, this also raises the question of whether in season two, Luthen will introduce Cassian to Saw Gerrera and if that's going to factor into any of the bad blood situations that they're worried about in Rogue One. I mean, it's a bit of a possibility. Cassian certainly doesn't say anything about it in Rogue One, but that doesn't matter necessarily. There's no reason for him to say, I got a history with Saw Gerrera. There's no reason for him to reveal that information in the scenes that we see. So, yeah, I'm fine with that if it turns out that Cassian and Saw are going to have a backstory. And if they do, I imagine things are not going to go well or end well between the two of them. For a fifth takeaway, let's talk about Dedra and Cyril whose fates seem to be intertwined or at least Cyril is making them be intertwined. Dedra probably would have been killed by the crowd on Ferrix if Cyril hadn't rescued her. I don't know how Dedra reacts to this quite honestly. Like the last thing that we see her saying is that I should say thank you, but considering how she's been in the series so far, you can imagine a scenario where she would be so angry to be seen as so vulnerable that she would make sure Cyril never sees the light of day again. Whether Dedra decides to make use of him or whether she disappears him, Either way, we know that he has not gone back to Linus Moss because the last we see him is that he's drinking on the side of a road like a wino and yeah, that seems like, okay, Moss's time in the Andor series and his influence on it in any particular way or influence on the characters in any particular way, I think his story arc is done. For a sixth takeaway, let's talk about Mon Mothma's scenes. We get a couple of very impactful scenes. First, of course, in the car where Mon realizes that Perrin is dealing with a gambling problem on Coruscant. She's known about this and told him, like, if you're going to do this, go somewhere else because you're putting me at risk. And they have a fight about it and argue about it. Supposedly, Clovis is not supposed to be listening, but of course he is. And we knew that he would be anyway because Mon has stated previously that the driver is spying on her and we get to see the proof of that when he goes to visit the ISB officer Blevin to report on the conversation. Now the funny thing about it is is that there is an opportunity for Mon Mothma here that she doesn't necessarily realize but the ISB people are kind of jumping to the conclusion that if there's an irregularity in her accounts that maybe it has to do with Perrin's gambling problem. That would require Mon Mothma to sell Perrin up the river for all intents and purposes. That's kind of another ethical moral quandary that she might face and ultimately make tougher and tougher decisions about where her values lie and what it means she's going to have to do to fulfill those values and concerns and ideals. And we see that she is already willing to compromise some of those things because she does make the meeting set up between Davo Skulden's son and her daughter, which may or may not lead to a betrothal. Mon was definitely saying that it was out of the question, but she's decided that it's worth keeping her safe and that the bigger goals of the galaxy are you know, more important than this particular situation. I'm sure that there is going to be a lot of soul searching and pain over this decision. We don't know whether they're actually going to end up getting betrothed, but I have a feeling that's probably the way it's going to go. And regardless of whether Mon Mothma's 400,000 credit situation disappears into Davos' financial empire or whether it ends up getting pinned on Perrin, Ultimately, the ISB may end up arriving at the same conclusion, which is that Davo is a wealthy thug, and I'm sure they're aware that 
he has some unscrupulous dealings, so they may just assume that Perrin is involved with the thug banker because we already know they have a history. Davos said, oh yeah, I've met Perrin a number of times. Meaning that Mon Mothma and her financial transactions may be shielded from imperial scrutiny and consequences in more ways than one. Lucky for her. And for a final takeaway, there are two different levels at which I could spoil this for you. I feel like I'm not going to spoil it for you at all, not even on the minor spoiler level. I will just tell you that if you haven't seen word about this already, stay for the end credits because there is a stinger at the end of the credits just before they start showing the voice cast for all of the other language adaptations. So let the whole credits roll and then you will see an end credit scene that explains something from earlier in the series. That's as much as I'm going to tell you on the podcast, but yeah, <laughs> as tempted as I am to go further with that. Nope, just watch for an end credit scene. All right, and there you go. So that is going to do it for our seven takeaway breakdown of the finale of season one of the Andor series it's called Rick's Road. And that is going to do it for this episode of the podcast. It just remains for me to say thank you so much for joining me for it. As always, and may the force be with you wherever in the world you may be. Seven is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox, and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other Star Wars related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited, but their respective trademark and copyright holders may the force be with them. All original content is copyright 2021 by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.